I'm not ashamed to Why couldn't David accept the threshing floor of Ornan as a gift? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 1 Chronicles on Walking Through the Bible. The glory of his cross. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verses 23 to 30. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 23. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, beginning at verse 23. But Ornan said to David, Take it to yourself, and let my lord the king do what is good in his eyes. Look, I also give you the oxen for burnt offerings, the threshing implements for wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. Then King David said to Ornan, No, but I will surely buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings with that which costs me nothing. So David gave Ornan 600 shekels of gold by weight for the price, for the, for, for the place. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. So the Lord commanded the angel and he returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord uh, and the altar of burnt offering, which Moses had made in the wilderness, were at that time at the high place in Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of the Lord, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. In this chapter, we've been examining the sinful actions of David in numbering the people. In doing this, David was showing his arrogance in the conquests that he had accomplished and a character weakness in that by depending on the numbers of fighting men in Israel, it meant that he was likelier to lean less on God for victory. Remember, by this time, David had already sinned with Bathsheba and had Uriah murdered. He had already been punished by God for this sin and had repented of it. My point in mentioning this, however, is that we need to remember that although David's reign didn't end with the adultery of Bathsheba, nor did he cease being a mighty king, his reputation did make, take a major hit, especially within his court and within his close friends and family. And his relationship with God, though again never wavering, did change too, for David is not going to act with the same decisiveness that he did in the past due to this very public sin. He is going to face family problems, insurrection, and other issues that, had he not sinned with Bathsheba, would have turned out very differently for him. But alas, he did sin, and so the rest of David's reign needs to be viewed with that in mind, including this event here. A younger David needed to depend on God, because everyone seemed to be against him. A newly minted king David needed to depend on God, because the kingdom was split and needed to be united. However, David is in his 50s here. He had been ruling on the throne in Israel and Judah for over 20 years at this point. He had been successful militarily and financially. And from the Psalms, we'd find that on many fronts, David always remained thankful to God for this. However, flaws in David's character also opened him up to other temptations, arrogance being one of them, which led to the census. Now, to David's credit, he did repent of this sin, but only after the census was taken. By then, the damage was done, and God was ready to punish David and Israel for this sin. Back a couple of lessons, we discussed why Israel deserved to be punished too, which was that the elders of the cities were likely complicit in helping count the people, and nobody among the people raised objections either when all of them should have said no. But alas, they went along, and so punishment was warranted. God, though, allowed David to pick the punishment. Three years of famine, three months of fleeing from and being defeated by his enemies, or three days of plague. David chose the three days of plague because this was the one that he would have to fully partake in with his people, while the other two choices wouldn't affect him the same as it would the people due to his position as king. God used an angel to inflict this punishment, and true to his word, this punishment was inflicted. However, when the angel came to Jerusalem to destroy it, David pleaded with the Lord for mercy for the people. For if anyone should be punished, it should be him. 
for he numbered the people. The Lord heard David's words, stayed for their punishment, but sent Gad the prophet to David to tell him to build an altar on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, whose land was just north of Jerusalem at that time. In order to do that, David would have to own the land, and so he offered to pay Ornan for it in full instead of merely taking it from him due to the fact that he was king. Now, Ornan wanted to do more than David asked by gifting him not only the threshing floor, but the animals to offer, the wood to kindle the fire with, and the implements needed to erect the altar. This was certainly a kind gesture on Ornan's part, but David could not accept. For David said, how could he sacrifice to the Lord his God with that which cost him nothing? It was David who sinned, not Ornan. Therefore, David needed to pay for the sacrifice and everything involved in it. This is a lesson for us today. We are commanded by God to offer spiritual sacrifices to him. We are commanded to give of our time and our physical blessings in order to expand the borders of the kingdom. We cannot therefore think that we can worship God properly while doing nothing. Is giving of our means really such if we give uh, if what we give was a gift from someone else? Can it really be said that we're offering prayers to God if the only time we pray is when others lead us in the worship services? Are we really are we really giving up our time for the kingdom if all we do is cheer on from the sidelines? Religion that costs us nothing isn't true religion at all. And sacrifice that costs us nothing isn't true sacrifice at all either. And by cost, I'm not just talking about money, but we're told to give of ourselves. That is going to have to cost us something if it is to be accepted by God. David understood that and so bought all that which Ornan offered for 600 shekels of gold by weight. Now back in 2 Samuel 24, we found that it was said there that David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Now, obviously, this is a difference. So what are the possible explanations for the difference? Well, we could have a later transcription error, as sometimes we have that when it comes to numbers in Scripture. However, there is another explanation that actually makes more sense when placed into the context of 1 Chronicles. Back in 2 Samuel 24, the writer was only worried about detailing to us the actual place where the altar was built. The book of 2 Samuel actually ends with the sacrifice and God staying the plague. 1 Chronicles is going to continue by discussing the next thing that would happen on this site, which are the plans for building the temple. Therefore, what the chronicler appears to be telling us is the price that David paid for the immediate use of the threshing floor, but also the surrounding land adjacent to it that would form the temple mount, while the writer of 2 Samuel, not going to discuss the temple, simply gave us the price paid for the threshing floor and the oxen. Thus, there is not a contradiction, just a difference in the information being presented. After paying Ornan, David built the altar to the Lord there and offered on it burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when the Lord had seen this, it is said, that the Lord answered David by fire on the altar of burnt offering, showing his approval thus heeding the prayers of the land and withdrawing the plague. The Lord's acceptance of this sacrifice here at Ornan's threshing floor and apart from the altar of burnt offering at the tabernacle, which was at Gibeon, would have a lasting impact on David. For due to this event, David was afraid to approach the Lord there, lest perhaps the angel of the Lord strike Jerusalem in his absence. Instead, David continued offering sacrifices here for the remainder of his reign, in the place where the temple would one day stand. And from everything that we read of during the rest of David's reign, the Lord allowed David to do this without consequence. The tabernacle would remain at Gibeon, yes, but those days were numbered, as chapter 22 and onwards is going to lay out in detail David's preparations for the building of the temple and the organization of its worship, work that would be completed during the reign of his son Solomon. So we invite you back for the beginning of that discussion. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. As we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a- Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends. 
so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. God is from